hear a couple of readings now from the Bible, uh, one of which comes from Exodus chapter 23, and the second of which comes from the book of Deuteronomy and chapter 24. So this is the first reading from Exodus, which says, Three times a year you are to celebrate a festival to me. Celebrate the festival of unleavened bread. For seven days eat bread made without yeast as I commanded you. Do this at the appointed time in the month of Aviv, for in that month you came out from e Egypt. No one is to appear before me empty-handed. Celebrate the festival of harvest with the first fruits of the crops you sow in your field. Celebrate the festival of ingathering at the end of the year when you gather in your crops from the field. Three times a year, all men are to appear before the sovereign Lord. Do not offer the blood of a sacrifice to me um, along with anything containing yeast. The fat of my festival offerings must not be kept until the morning. Bring the best of the first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. And then a reading from Deuteronomy. When you make a loan of any kind to your neighbor, do not go into their house to get what is offered to you as a pledge. Stay outside and let the neighbor to whom you are making the loan bring the pledge out to you. If the neighbor is poor, do not go to sleep with their pledge in your possession. Return their cloak by sunset so that your neighbor may sleep in it. Then they will thank you and it will be regarded as a righteous act in the sight of the Lord your God. Do not take advantage of a hired worker who is poor and needy, whether that worker is a fellow Israelite or a foreigner residing in one of your towns. Pay them their wages each day before sunset because they are poor and are counting on it. Otherwise, otherwise, they may cry to the Lord against you and you will be guilty of sin. This is bizarre in the middle of this. Parents are not to be put to death for their children, nor children put to death for their parents. Each one will die for their own sin. That's just in the middle of a load of things about justice. Do not deprive the foreigner or the fatherless of justice or take the cloak of the widow as a pledge. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you from there. That is why I command you to do this. When you are harvesting in your field and you overlook a sheaf, do not go back to get it. Leave it for the foreigner, the fatherless and the widow so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat the olives from your trees, do not go over the branches a second time. Leave what remains for the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow. When you harvest the grapes in your vineyard, do not go over the vines again. Leave what remains for the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt. That is why I command you to do this. Amen. So just a, a couple of readings there. The first one is uh, where Moses um, gives this command almost, you know, and it's, it comes from God, that there are to be times of celebration. There are going to be festivals that will happen in the life and community of the people of Israel. And I, I often think um, about the notion of times of celebration, um, times where we sort of put a marker down about something. And... Um, I'm a fan, I think, in some senses, of uh, rituals that help us to develop a healthy and whole rhythm to life. 
And I think God, in our first reading, via Moses, is installing in the people a kind of sense of rhythm and order to life. Life is ordered. Life um, has a cycle to it. And we are involved in that cycle. And there is a command, isn't there, that uh, there is a celebration of harvest. We come and we celebrate what God has provided for us and the means by which those things are provided for us. But in our second reading, which is a lot more about justice, he talks about the way in which uh, the Israelites, as they are harvesting and as they are making food, how they are to approach this whole affair of using the gifts of harvest. Now, I always think that the Bible and God's commands always remind us of the big picture. The big picture is that we belong to the earth and we belong to each other in community. So there is no notion necessarily of us saying that we totally own that which we have. So the big picture is that what we have is always blessing from God. And I think, you know, when you feel like you own something, you can get incredibly possessive about that which you own and refuse to share it. And oftentimes, that creates a mentality that is rather self-obsessed and destructive. So God commands the Israelites about the manner in which they are supposed to use the blessings that they've been given. Now, listen, don't, don't be miserly and, and don't be sort of going so ruthlessly with your crops. Make sure that you are leaving some. You know, there's a notion of charity here, but I, I think sometimes about charity. I've just got a bit of a thing about charity that often we give what we wouldn't use ourselves. Have you ever noticed that? People think, well, I'm not going to bother with this. I'll, somebody else can use it. And I don't really think that's great. I think the notion here is you're actually going to leave in your fields the things that you would use for yourself. Do you understand that? I think that's charity. It's not, well, my shoes are worn away, so I'm going to give them to someone. It's, you know, if I would wear them and it's costly to give them away, then that's charity. And I think here God is, God is saying, listen, I want you to be a generous, charitable people with what you have. I don't want you to, you know, uh, be stressing about getting everything you can out of your field for yourself. I want you to understand the notion of generosity and justice. And uh, I think that is, you know, it's a massive bit of the heart of Scripture, isn't it? Remember, you were slaves once and you were no longer slaves so from your blessing, use it well for the betterment of others. So harvest, we come and we celebrate together today the gifts of food, the gifts of harvest. We remember those who were involved in, in the production of food, those whose livelihood depends on the harvest, and we think and pray and give thanks for them. But we remind ourselves that this is all a big, bigger kind of picture, isn't it? We are connected to the earth. The earth is connected to us. And we are to treat the earth well. And we are to use the blessings that the earth yields well for others too. Now, we probably haven't. I don't think we've got any farmers. Have we got any farmers in here today or anybody who's... All right, yes, yeah. But, um, but, you know, I often think of harvest and I think, well, I just go to Asda or... No, I don't actually. I go to my mum and dad's, right, yeah. So, you know, and, um, I, you know, I don't really feel the sort of burden of needing something to be produced from the ground. 
You know, um, I'm not someone who's thinking, well, we need to pray for rain or we need to pray for good conditions because I'm sort of, you know, we're privileged enough to go and buy food, aren't we? And, um, and so I was thinking today, so, you know, what do we do with the notion of harvest? Yeah, we can give thanks to God for food. And I think for me, one of the things, and it's always been a tradition in harvest kind of festival services, is that we look at how we're going to use the blessings that we have. So some years, we've done collections for the food bank. We've even brought food and done stuff like that. But I think the notion, from Scripture at least, of us having a generous heart is what harvest is all about. Indeed, the fact that we get a harvest is the generosity of God and the way he's blessed us with the riches of this earth. We are to bless others. We're to be a harvest people. We're to celebrate fruits and we are to celebrate reaping those fruits and we are to give them away. So I suppose today we need to think about the fact that, you know, we might go and buy something and not even think about all the conditions around that thing that we've bought. But there is a, always a bigger picture for us to think about. There's also justice. You know, and I think we, we should say something. Now, I, I'm not a massive fan of driving this home because I think if you're poor you won't have the privilege of shopping in a particular way that might be called just. But if we have the means to make sure that the food that we are buying is fairly traded and all of that kind of stuff, then I think we are duty-bound as Jesus followers to make sure that what we're buying is, is fairly sourced, that the workers are paid fairly, and that all is good. You know, it's nice that we can shop around and get discounts, but again, I'm a little bit of not of a fan of that because a discount on one thing puts a price on something else. I just think you should pay the price, you know. Um, and, um, you know, we shouldn't in our shopping be wanting to, you know, go over the ground twice. You know, um, people need paying. So if we, if we are privileged enough, to have a living wage or something better than a living wage, then I would say we are duty-bound to do our shopping in a just way too, in a way that's fair for the person behind the thing that you've bought rather than just fair for you. Um, so um, in a little while, after we've uh, sang together um, about justice and the call to justice, we are going to watch a video, and then we're going to do a collection, but we're not going to do the collection in the service. We're going to do it after the service, but I'm going to introduce you to a project that we'd like you to give to, to as part of the blessing of harvest. So let's commit ourselves, I would say, to be a people that understand the big picture, the rhythm and the order of things, that we're a people of justice, that we're a generous people, and that we understand that all that we are blessed with has required the work of others. And so we pay fairly and we do our business fairly so that those who are dependent on the trade that we benefit from are treated fairly too in the process. This I think is what it means to be a grateful, thankful, harvest people. Amen.